Real quick, they were, uh, <laughs> these ra- are raise your hand if you've encountered are less than recording? two types of monkeys from India. <laughs> All right. Less raise, than? Less than. <laughs> now raise your hand if you have encountered two or, two more. or more types yeah. of monkeys from India. Oh, wow. That's you. Oh. See? Steve they is the monkey expert. Welcome to the Gathering Greenhouse, a podcast to help us grow together. I'm Steve. I want you to intro us one more time. <laughs> well, welcome to the ga- welcome to the Gathering Greenhouse. You know, if we lo- if we a podcast if, about monkeys, if that whole pre-conversation gets cut out, people are gonna like, what, what? what are you doing? Why'd you do that? Why? So well, I my, think we started my very limited experience with monkeys. You're an expert. I'm not an expert. You are I've been to the zoo several rel- times. It's all relative. And none of us here are nearly, that's, have as nearly as much expertise. This is the sure. internet, Steve, and you have a podcast. You're technically oh, the most... Oh, that's true. You're, you're right. The definition you of an expert, right? how important I am. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for reminding me. <laughs> well, um, I... I mean, I, everybody gets to be an expert in something. Yeah. I had a couple uh, just... You're an expert in monkeys. Right. Well, now I'm about to be an expert in the 4th of July because I have a couple... Uh, kind of icebreaker questions for you guys because we just came out of the uh, fourth Fourth of July here. So, first one here is which city hosted the first official Fourth of July celebration? Define official. official. According to the internet. <laughs> Well, <laughs> so it could just be anything. I mean, you, you want to say something like well, Philadelphia. It, I'd, I'd, I'd be inclined well, to I'll say Philadelphia. Uh, it was 1777. So it was the year after so they signed be like the Declaration Philadelphia, of Philadelphia, Boston, or New York. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm were they, but did, they, did the U.S. win the war by July 4th? No. So how was it? They because, had a, the, because it was Independence Day. Independence it's not Day is our, not about winning the war. It's yeah. about declaring independence. Okay, but if they declared independence, but they hadn't like gained independence, bankruptcy. how can they have a celebration? I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Steve, we're Americans. It doesn't so have what, to So it is Philadelphia. You're correct. Yeah. Okay, which... We're great Americans right here. So this is something I never knew, but apparently the Liberty Bell rings each Independence Day. Like how, on its own? Like well, some someone rings it. That's freedom, you know. baby. You know, we were English, Alexander we'd be Graham talking Bell. about a phone call right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the so, how many times does it ring? Like each Independence Day, how many times does it ring? Yeah, on Independence Day, how many times does thirteen? One thousand seven hundred and seventy-six <laughs> times. <laughs> that would be amazing. No, it is thirteen. <laughs> Oh, is that you know just for the colonies? You know this is the colonies. Uh, that was I, a guess, but okay, that was a good guess. The rest of us don't matter. <laughs> just the OGs. <laughs> All right. Um, well, isn't aren't we part of like in, here in Ohio? We're part of one of the which which original colony? Are we Virginia? How? What do you mean? We're co- like the original. Virginia. The colonies, all like the first stretched. territory. Oh. They, yeah, they, they had like territories. The western territory. We were stretched. part of the western territory. No, 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 no. Like, like they all the states all stretched a lot further west than they are now. Oh, really? Made, like, you think it stretched all up. the way to Ohio? I, I, Virginia was huge. Yeah, I think we might have been. But wasn't Virginia huge because it used so to be West York. Virginia and wasn't Virginia? Wasn't that why it was so big? Well, and then it split off during. Well, that was during the Civil War. Civil War. Yeah. We would have to either be Virginia, Maryland. No, we couldn't be Maryland because West Virginia blocked that off. Either Virginia or Pennsylvania. Someone watching probably, or maybe neither. Maybe we thinks they neither. know. We were certainly knows. the Northwest Territories. For okay. Sure. Yeah. All right, what was your question? The, I, the, I don't want to do my last one. I don't like it. I, so. I want you to do the last one. You want me to do it? It's to. not that interesting now that I now that I'm reading a little better. Okay. It seemed like a good idea it at did. the time. It seemed like it, but I'm like this <laughs> actually like is more I'm about who was president than anything about July 4th. Um, when when was? No. Okay. Sorry. Wait. This is terrible television. It is. It is. Okay. Two times speed. Now I understand. When was the first July 4th celebration held at the White House? July 4th. See, it's not that interesting. July 4th. Yeah, July. I but agree. I need the year, too. Well, um, the I, White House wasn't even there. Until after the War of 1812. No, no, it, it was there before. Well, it, it got the burned. burned down. It yeah. got burned in the War of 1812. Then where did uh, George Washington live? Monticello? No, that, that, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know it's not. Uh, I know it's not Monticello. That's not even... That's not even. <laughs> That's not even the right president. <laughs> that's what's that? That's, that's uh, Jefferson. Jefferson. 
Uh, he, lived, he, he lived in Mount, Mount Vernon? Ver, that's right. I've been to his house before. I went there one time, and I saw him and Martha. Very low ceilings. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, think, I think Adams was the first in okay, the White House. Okay, I'll give house, you a hint. It was Thomas be... Jefferson was the president. So then it would have been, he's the third president. And so you had Washington for eight, Adams for four. So 12 years in from the Constitution, not from the, the war. And the Constitution is 1786. Hey, you're getting close here, David. So I'm actually very 90, impressed. 90, oh, you're so That's close. 1800? 1801. 1801. Okay. All right. 1801. John I, and I said, I said that at the we, same time as you. We synced it. I didn't know. All right. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Well, that's now you learned a bunch of things you didn't care about or didn't even really want no, to know. No, I care You're about this stuff. I like history. Okay. I yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of Jefferson, but but I like history. Okay. Yeah. You're a Jefferson hater. Not a hater. Hope. Just you know. So I, I will say he, uh, I think, unrightfully gets a lot of hate, but I think he's also over like um, overhyped. So so sometimes. my dislike like he did of him one really good. You just don't like the twenty dollar bill. <laughs> my dislike of him has nothing to do with why most people yeah. dislike him, right? Like I, I, I get the whole well, you know, all all but Adams of the first five presidents were slave owners, right? Yeah. So I'm not gonna say that's the reason I don't like them, right? Because I'm not gonna well, say that about it, the other he ones. He also had like a child with a slave too. He did, and, and all that. That was I just part of it. Politically, don't like him. Okay. I don't. I, I think you know he he was, was he part of the Whigs or the no no he was the he was the the Democratic Whatever. Republicans. Okay, but he my my big issue with him was he was a big fan of the French Revolution. I don't like that. And he's the one that got the whole to use the media. <laughs> I can to, see to burn. just the interest so slipping. Like everybody's Everyone leaving. interest see is just like, Come back hey, next week. I'm just like thinking about something no. else. right? So <laughs> he, the T -word. he actually what? was very underhanded in his use of the media, which was just print media at the time, to really slander John Adams. So mm. John Adams only ran, was only president for four years, and then he, he lost. So he was a big jerk. Yeah, big time. Dang. Also, Jefferson. if I have to pick, you know, again, Hamilton, not one of my favorites either. But yeah. if I have to pick Hamilton versus Jefferson, and you, and you do, you have yeah. to pick one or the other, I, I go with Hamilton. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's shift some gears here, and let's head into some questions about our— James deep... Madison? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about all the Ohio presidents. The Which was your favorite Ohio president? I don't know Grant? the Ohio presidents. Nope. Um, Grant? He wasn't an Ohio president, was he? Yeah. Duh. Ulysses S. Grant? Yeah, he's from Ohio. Is he really? I don't think Where's that's true. Where's our fact checker? I don't Someone think text that's true. <laughs> maybe oh, he is. Got, maybe I know something that David doesn't know. Wait, I, I don't think he was an Ohio president, I though. can't get us away from talking about is presidents Garfield, now. That was, was what I was trying to. Was Garfield Ohio? <laughs> yes, of course he was. The cat? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we have the most, like, we have... I don't know if we're the state with the most have, presidents yeah. or no, tied. No, no, Grant, no, Grant, no, no, you're not. No, no. Uh, we not, were for a lot. I mean, if there's another state that overtook us. Virgin, we were no, no, no. Virginia. And you guys what? never caught Virginia. Okay. So, so the, well, the, there's another thing we need to fact check here. So there's we, been eight presidents from Ohio, according to this list. You might well, know What does from mean? Grant like, was from Ohio. At some point, they the, lived Grant in Ohio. Grant was from Ohio. On the Ohio, Wait, on the Ohio they claim Lincoln of too? State website. Uh, dot gov. <laughs> you know, like eight different states claim Lincoln. <laughs> uh, Why not? And like eight different states claim the Wright brothers, too. Right? Yep. But we're the only one. Yeah. I can't. Ohio does not really have eight presidents from Ohio. According to a very one, important two, website. One, two, three, four, uh, li list five, them. List them. six, list them. seven. Listen, eight. we have the most non notable William and Henry Harrison. Okay. Taft. He was born in Virginia, Stringer. but he lived well, in Ohio when elected. See, this is, what, this is what I'm talking about. Born in Virginia. So but Virginia gets Ohio, to claim him, too. Okay. So he was elected as an Ohioan. Who was? Grant? Uh, no. Harrison. Harrison. Grant was born in Ohio. Um, is this how we're going to spend Rutherford our time on the podcast? Rutherford Hayes uh, was born in Dwell Delaware, Ohio, which is funny because you could say he's from Delaware. <laughs> um, Garfield was... Uh, Actually, the only one I knew. Orange, Ohio. You didn't know Taft? He's, like, from Cincinnati. No. Benjamin Harrison was mm -hmm. an orphan. Oh, Harrison, he was a great president. <laughs> Dude, wasn't he the one that lasted like 13 days or 36 yeah. days or something? He got pneumonia in, yeah. in his speech and died. <laughs> Didn't wear an umbrella. Take an umbrella. Uh, William McKinley is from He's Niles, from Canton, Ohio. Canton area. Um, 
uh, Taft. What about was Cleveland? Born in Cincinnati. Was Cleveland from? Uh, no, that's the best part. He wasn't from <laughs> Ohio. Grover what? Cleveland was not from Ohio. <laughs> um, Warren G. Harding was from Warren Coriska. Okay, no. Yeah. And that's the last one. <laughs> Warren right. G. Taft so, is a really interesting president. So I had by no the way. idea. I was I was living in the the land of the presidents. Yeah, but old presidents. We don't have anyone modern. Yeah. Back Ohio's when it back when times. it wasn't that hard to become the president. It, we, that's actually been a big thing with the like. <laughs> we were pretty. Ohio was a pretty big deal back then. Do you think we how lost easy a lot it was to become since. president when you got elected on what you said, <laughs> not about how you looked or how you like? Because you know, if you had the best slander, you won. Back then? No, I mean, I think there was a time when actually you got elected. So I think, yeah. Well, I, just, I just think we need to make it okay for ugly well, people to be president. Well, let's... Like let's uh, have you looked at can, our current candidates? Yeah. Can, can I shift gears now? here? Let's talk about something that actually, you know, applies to what we're trying to talk about today. Okay. Is that okay? What are we trying to talk about today? We're, we're trying, trying to talk about. about the deep dive coming up. Oh. Deep dive. Yes. Can I, you tell me... I wore my deep dive shirt today. <laughs> what, you, what is that? Where underneath there? That's a no, D for deep oh, dive. Oh, D for deep dive. That's okay. how uh, it's actually far as deep for back deep in dive. history you have to go to find a championship. <laughs> deep dive. No, no. Not that far. Right? For the Tigers? For the Tigers, though, not that World far. World Series 1984, but they, they've been in the World Series Oh, no. John, twice. you kind of got David down the road to baseball now. 2006 and 2012. <laughs> and, what, what happened for those years? And right now, they are the current reigning champions of the state of Ohio. Oh, because they beat... They swept the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. I heard that, like, what, nine or ten of the next 15 games, the... Guardians and the and the Tigers play each other, something yeah. like that. They're playing each other. You know, they, a bunch. Beat the, they beat the Guardians last night, Steve. I don't follow that close, but they beat them. Okay, so well, four in a row. Who has, I, That's four who in a row has the against better, Ohio? Teams. Who has the better record right, right now? now? The Guardians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I just want I just want to point this out because okay. I don't know. You weren't in the service on Sunday. I listened to it though. Third no, 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 service, no. but in second service, okay. and I got up to preach. People booed me. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> And I just want y'all to know, I'm wearing my Tiger shirt today because you booed. And I just want to rub it in that after you booed, my team swept your team. And I I feel good about that. I did too. Yeah. They were probably booing because we didn't have any food because they came last week to the church picnic and we're expecting a bunch of food this week. Maybe that's what it was. (laughs) Realized, wait, this is just church today. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right, deep dive. Why do we do deep dives? Let's start there. What is a deep dive? So deep dives are, you know, every so often we'll do a midweek kind of Mm -hmm. extended teaching time. Yeah. And I I think the reason we do them, there's a couple reasons. Uh, One is because it's valuable for us to uh, take time to dig a little more deeply into topics and passages Mm -hmm. that we don't have time in a a sermon. So a sermon is, is about 30 to 40 minutes. And you just can't say everything in that much time. Yeah. And why do we do sermons that long? Attention spans? Or um, no. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of talking. <laughs> so it is. It I is. think attention span is probably part of it. Yeah. I mean, there's just this really, you know, practical piece that we have a lot of people that <laughs> come to our church. In and out. Yeah. And we got to try to do three services on a morning. And that kind of dictates the time. But I think there's a lot of studies out there that would show, you know, uh, the attention span is only so much. If you read any of the sermons in the Bible, they're not even that long, <laughs> right? Well, what, what's our goal, right? Our goal is for people to hear what you have to say from the Bible mm-hmm. and then to put it into action. Yep. If you're talking for an hour and a half and people yeah. can't do anything with an hour and a half of teaching, then why are we doing it? Right. Yep. And, and on the other side of that coin is like, uh, you know, if you're able to say what you have to say, there's no point in just keep talking, correct. keep saying to hear you yourself know, talk. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, and, uh, sometimes uh, I think some people are, I, I honestly, I've been to some of these churches and the pastor talks for 45 to an hour and you're just like, I don't remember anything. I don't remember yeah. a yeah. single thing because you didn't have to whittle it down to where it was the most important stuff. Yeah. yeah if you just stand sure. up there and talk. Right. And I, I like to think that our Sunday services are patterned after the, the biblical pattern of church, which is that you have a mix of believers and unbelievers and a mix of spiritual maturity among the believers, which yeah. means that when I'm talking to people on a Sunday, I'm talking to people anywhere from they don't believe in Jesus to like super mature Christians. And the super mature Christians, they may want more. They may like, give yeah. us some more meat, you know, give us, and that's great. And that's why we do the deep dives. Right. Is because we're, we're acknowledging that, you know, a Sunday sermon 
is a, a lot of times it's the low hanging fruit, but that's mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. Um, now I think I think there's something there for everybody. So so would that have been like kind of like back in the day, like you know the temple court yard? Am I saying that? Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so, so that's like where they came to. Yep. D- had discussions there and more teachings and things like that. Do you think that stuff was organized out in the temple courtyards, or th- people just showed up because? No, I think it was because in Acts two it talks yeah. about you know in the first church they would meet in the temple courts and they would meet in their homes. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where our pattern for big service small groups comes from. But it, it does say that they the reason they met together in the temple courts was for the apostles' teaching. So I think there was a level of organization there yeah. that. Do you like, think hey, the temple well, courts liked them? No, those people being no, there. No, they did not. I'm just they thinking did not that, like that seems it. like in my head. It doesn't seem like the greatest place to do that. Like, it's kind of hard for me but to like I, really put myself in that that's time period. Also why they did it? No, right? but yeah, I mean, think about what they what they were saying was it was. But by meeting there, it, what they were saying essentially was, we are the legitimate continuation of temple worship. Mm-hmm. Like what we're preaching here, this this is where Judaism needs to go. Yeah. Now that message was obviously rejected, but I think that's that's why they so, were there. So, do you think that there were other? people out there doing the same things at that time? Sure. The temple was the in Jerusalem. It was the hub of everything. Yeah. So, you know, it was like the public square. Yeah. And, okay. and, and it's like, it was like Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and like, that's one thing about the temples is there was a series of basically thresholds, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, the further out you got, the more people who were allowed to be there and, you know, then certain up until like the holiest of holies that only the most yeah. holy of priests were allowed once, you know, so you, you there's just a structural thing in that that um, and that's one of the things where they met was where people could be right right and I think that's also a symbol of it's for everyone so mm-hmm. the, the the this was Herod's temple and so he, Herod built this massive area surrounding the temple like you had the your temple courtyards like the mm-hmm. courtyard of men and then the holy place and the holy of holies and all that but then outside of that Herod because he wanted to earn the favor of the people because remember he's not actually Jewish you know is so he's Edomite Mm-hmm. And so he wants to earn the favor of the people. He builds this massive structure around the temple, so it does become the center of Jerusalem. That that's why it was a commerce center. People were buying and selling there. That's why Jesus was angry. He said this is supposed Flipping to be a house tables. of prayer, right? And and it was out on that big, massive courtyard area that the church was probably meeting. You could have potentially had thousands of people out there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, interesting. So the reason we do the deep dives, yeah. It's because we recognize that on Sunday mornings, the level of teaching is is not as deep as some people would prefer. But also, uh, anytime we're doing a sermon series, there's a lot of stuff that I'd love to talk about that has to get left on the cutting room floor uh, because of time constraints, because of clarity constraints. Um, And so the deep dive is an opportunity to kind of take whatever our our current sermon series is and say, hey, let's hit on this this issue. Okay. Yeah. Great. So next question along as... um, what is the next deep dive going to be about? You talked about it on Sunday. I did. So if you're yep. here on Sunday, you would have heard a teaser for it. Yeah. So our next deep dive, and the date is July 17th. Okay. So coming up soon. 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. And I think we have child care. You have to register if you want child care. Okay. On Church Center yep. app. On the Church Center app. And if you haven't downloaded the Church Center app, Steve, go ahead and do that. How can they do that? You can find it in any of the app stores. It's really easy. You download it, then it's going to ask you a few questions just to connect you to uh, the gathering because it's not going to know that at first. So it's going to ask for some information, ask for your zip code so it can find the gathering. 45458. 45458. Or you can really. You probably put your zip code in there, and it would you give you a whole even list. Search the gathering. Yeah, you can right. do that too. Yep. Yep. Um, right. Our logo's on there, so it's you'll know yeah. it's definitely us. Yeah. Right. Our logo is the one that looks like the little map placement. Yeah. So you know exactly where to go. Yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> right. So our next and our next deep dive is going to be about the Romans Road, mm-hmm. uh, which is a series of verses. This is old school stuff. I mean, if you grew up in a yeah. Baptist church, so are we, are you we know, giving away the the Bible tracts? Or we <laughs> might. We might. <laughs> but the Romans Road is a series of verses, all from the Book of Romans, uh, that are really helpful to lead someone through the gospel message. And yeah. so uh, we're going to probably use four or five of those and we'll walk through them. And then we'll spend time on each one talking about what are some of the objections that people might have to this yeah. and then you know how to answer those objections. But it'll be a really good opportunity for people, A, if you want to understand the gospel more clearly, 
B, if you want to understand Romans more clearly, mm -hmm. and C, if you want to know how to talk about Jesus to other people, this is going to be a really great deep dive. Okay. So would you say that when Paul was writing the book of Romans, that he intentionally put that in there? Not necessarily Romans Road, but those verses, because was that part of his intent to his audience to mm. teach them those things? So, yes and no. Okay. Because he was speaking to a specific audience. He was. With, with intention. Yes. Because it was a letter sent mm -hmm. to them. So, Romans is a little bit unique among Paul's letters because he's writing it to a church that he's never been to. Most of his letters are to churches that he actually started. And so he's writing to people who are, in, in a way, kind of his spiritual children. Mm -hmm. You know, he brought them to Christ. He developed them into spiritual leaders. He launched the church, and then he moved on. And he's writing back to them to encourage them, to build them up, to answer questions, those kind of things. Romans is written to a church that Paul didn't start, and he, he'd never been to Rome yet. Mm -hmm. So he's actually writing it from Corinth, but he wants to go to Rome, and he's planning to go to Rome. And so this is his kind of introduction to the people in Rome to say, hey, this is who I am. I want you to, to know I'm legit. And, and so he's doing a couple of things. He, he's, he's showing them that the gospel he preaches is the same gospel that they understand. Mm -hmm. And so in, in one way, he's not teaching them this stuff for the first time, but he's kind of pointing out to them, hey, we believe the same stuff. Okay. But he's also helping them to understand that for the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians, we're all on the same team. Because it, Rome is this big, you know, place where there's all kinds of people. There's Jewish Christians, there's Gentile Christians. Um, a short time before he wrote the book of Romans, all the Jewish people had been kicked out of Rome. Now they, they're coming back in. And so as they're kind of working their way back in, he's trying to say, hey, let's all come together because we're all one church. So that's one of the things he's doing. Mm -hmm. but, but what's funny is probably his biggest intent is to convince the church of Rome to give money to yeah. the church in Jerusalem. Right. That's really what he's, he's doing because Paul is going around to all the churches collecting money because the Christians in Jerusalem are facing severe famine and severe persecution. Right. And he wants the Gentile Christians to take care of the Jewish Christians as a way of bringing them all together because that's really his big goal. So that's, that's all that he's doing there. But, but what he does in Romans is so helpful for us because he walks us through the gospel really plainly and really clearly in incredible detail to help us get a much deeper theological understanding. Okay. That was a longer answer than you thought, it, wasn't No, it? that was a good answer because that you know, kind of went along the lines of what I was wanting to hear about, you know, why is a Romans road and important and why should we care about it? Yeah. You know, so right. I think that answers those questions. Yeah. Let me, let me just jump into that yeah. a little bit more because so what's helpful about the Romans road is we take the, the verses from each section of Romans that most clearly summarize what Paul is teaching. Yeah. Because Paul's writing is hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. He has so many clauses and he has these long run on sentences. Right. And so the Romans road really crystallizes some of those teachings into the verses that are the best summaries and, and help us to understand it a little bit more. Okay. Great. So that, that sounds like it would apply to everyone. I mean, no matter, no matter yeah. if you... Yep. don't have a relationship with Jesus and you want to find out what does it really mean mm -hmm. to someone who's been a Christian a long time. Yep. And I think this is the next thought along the lines when I was thinking about Romans Road and digging into it. Um, why should we care about sharing our faith? Why, why is that important? Because that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there, there's yeah. two ways to approach that, I guess. One is to say... Um, if you need me to motivate you right. towards that, I would say, this is why God has you here. Right? Yeah. That's the intellectual answer. But I think the bigger answer is, if you really believe it, yeah. why wouldn't you share it? Yeah. Like, if I, if I really believe that this is the best news possible, if I really believe that people's eternal destiny rests on this truth, then, then why wouldn't I want to share that? And, yeah. and so I, I would just argue from that perspective mm -hmm. of saying it's the most important thing you can ever tell someone. Right. And so I agree with both of those things, but my personal one is a little bit different. I agree with that completely, what you said, but mine is my life has been changed so much for the positive Absolutely. because of it. I, I want to share it with other people. Yep, I absolutely. want other people to understand it, to understand what it means for them and mm -hmm. have the same life change that I got to experience from becoming right. a Christian well, following and, it. And this is actually in Romans. like So, so Romans 10, uh, it says, you know, 
uh, in verse 14, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone <laughs> tells, tells them, them, right? Yeah. Right. So uh, pretty simple. Yeah. If, yeah. if you want the people around you to experience salvation and experience um, the, just the life change that comes from knowing the Lord, um, well, they're not going to know about it unless mm -hmm. someone tells them about it. And yep. so it's, it's super practical to me. Yeah. That's why we do it. That's probably where we'll end the deep dive is with that, that passage right okay. there, because we'll get we'll get through the whole thing. And then that actually flows out of one of the last verses that we'll <laughs> and now look you at. don't have to come. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler yeah. alert. OK, um, then I did have a couple other questions here about this. Um, uh so should we, as Christians, should I, should we be able to answer questions about our faith? Or is that like left up to the church and the pastor or someone else who's more capable? Should I personally be able to answer mm -hmm. questions? And a second layer of that, like, how deep do I have to be prepared mm -hmm. to go, right? Because um, you went to seminary, like, yeah. so you're going to know more. You know, what about the guy who just comes to church on Sunday? It's true. Seminary teaches you a lot of very useful things. And useful. We're very important. We're very important. Lots of useful of and it. useless <laughs> information. I, I, I think the obvious answer is yes, I should be prepared to give an answer to those who because ask me. Because it literally of, says that in of, the Bible. Of the hope that is it's in It's actually me. word for word. But I should in do there. so with gentleness and respect. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, yes, I should be prepared. If people come to me and say, why are you a Christian? I should be able to tell them why I'm a Christian. But in a simple way. Right. It, you should be. You should know what, how you're going to you answer that. You should know, because, I mean, if you come to me and say, why are you a Detroit Tigers fan? And you can't answer that question. I can't answer that no, question. No, I'm saying if you couldn't, right, yeah. I would question you oh, wearing yeah. you're the shirt. You're not really a fan. fan. This, is, this is my wife, Maria. She wear she will wear, like, <laughs> Guardian stuff or, like, Ohio State stuff, and you ask one question about it. She has no clue. She just, you know, wants to be on the bandwagon. Nothing right. wrong with that. <laughs> but, you know. Does she watch this podcast? No, she does okay. not watch his podcast. Right. <laughs> Somebody needs to share this and tag her. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in anything of life, if someone asks, well, why do you believe that? Or why do you do that? You, you can give an answer. And so if somebody says, why are you a Christian? You should be ready to answer that. Now, how deep should you be ready to answer that? I think as deep as you can. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I well, think we should always be trying to learn more. Depending on who you're talking to would also kind of depend on how deep you're going to get with it. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who has has no understanding of what it means to be a Christian, you're probably just dropping some seeds there. So just at the beginning level of like, maybe you don't even know if God exists. Maybe you're starting there of just, you know, yeah. right. dropping some knowledge on them so to make them think, <laughs> you know? I'm going to drop some knowledge. Drop some knowledge. Like, yeah. hey, you maybe you've never even thought about how did we get here? Yeah. You know, what's the answer to that? Right. Yeah. And I, th I think maybe what you're getting at, I think, is a good point that we should answer them to the questions they're asking. Yes. Don't answer the questions they're not asking. Yeah. Answer the questions. They're asking. And if you can't. Don't immediately jump to the end of you need to accept Jesus right. Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, like yeah. start building that base and start building that relationship and friendship because people can pick up on the agenda that you have. Mm -hmm. If you come into it trying to automatically say, this person, I want them to become a Christian. Now, listen to them, have a conversation with them like a person, um, and show them the hope so, that you have. I, yeah. I actually had a conversation with somebody. He asked me, he asked me, a, um, he's like, hey, as a, as a pastor, what, like, how should I think about this? And what I just told him before I answered, I was like, I'm going to give you no answer before I give you the wrong answer. Like, and I'm just Correct. Gonna, I'm just going to own up front that there's things I don't understand or, uh, and understand confident you know, to, to a level where I'm just be like, this is definitely how it is. Um, you know, and so sometimes I think it's okay for us to admit that, say, I don't understand this yet, mm -hmm. but I'm trying, uh, here's somebody who might, or here's a place to look, here's what to read. Yeah. Um, or, and sometimes, sometimes I'll just say, Hey, I, I'm leaning this way now on how I'm understanding that, but I'm not, yeah, it's not something I fully understand yet. You know, when, when someone asks you a question that you can't answer, that is one of the best doorways into a deeper conversation because yeah. you get to say, hey, you know what? I don't know that, but I'm going to try to find out. Yep. Let's get together next week and talk more about this, and I'll yep. try to have an answer for you. Yep. I mean, what an, what an amazing opportunity that now, because somebody asked you a question you couldn't answer, now you get to talk more about Jesus with and, them. And you're building a relationship, which yeah. is uh, way more powerful and convincing than the best argument. Yep. yep. Okay. I have one more question here. Right. Um, why do you think people are scared or apprehensive about sharing their faith? Yeah. 
You know, I don't have an answer for that, yeah. but let's get together next week and we can talk okay, more about great. it. <laughs> I, I think because we like to be liked mm-hmm. and we're afraid that people won't like us. Yeah. And, and there's there's a lot more to that, obviously. Right. Like people might not like us because we're afraid they're going to think I'm being judgmental or, or they're going to think I'm an idiot for believing in, you know, someone that I can't see or, or whatever else it might be. But at the end of the day, I think it's fear, and, and it's fear that we won't be liked or accepted. And yeah. that, that's a huge motivator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what would you say to someone who might be feeling that? I, w- <laughs> I would say they need to build their faith. Yeah. Because we, we, I, I hit on this on Sunday. I wish I could have spent more time on this, and we probably will later in Romans. But anytime we don't do what we know we should do, mm-hmm. it's because our faith is too weak. Yeah. And, and we need to build our faith. And, and so the, the key is build your faith. And as you build your faith, you'll have more courage yeah. to do the hard things. Mm-hmm. And how do we build our faith is through gratitude. Because in gratitude, I remind myself that God has always been faithful. And if I know that he has always been faithful, then I know that he will take care of me even if I do the hard things. Yeah. So, yeah, I, so I can re- relate to this in the extent of like, I'm a people person. I like people. I also like to be a people pleaser often, too. Mm-hmm. You just uh, said so many times. Can we, you know, we need to take that and just clip that little pleaser. element and like speed like it people. off. I'm and a then really, and like, like having a rap like, clip in like, people. I'm a people pleaser. People, people, people pleaser. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry. Go on. Okay. Anyway, um, that like something that I often do is I pray about it. I, I just say, you know, like make it natural for me, like. If there's an opening, give me the words to say. Um, help me to make it natural, not awkward, because I, you know, I'm friends with this person. You know, give me the eyes to like look for opportunities and the right words to say. And you know what? Oftentimes, that those things happen when I pray mm-hmm. about it beforehand. That those things often happen yep. where I can bring it up in a natural way, where I'm not like, you know, we're talking about the Detroit Tigers, like, do you know Jesus? You know, like, you know, something, something like that, where it's like, just Jesus is a Tiger fan. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Where you're just so weird and so awkward of just like, Hey, you know, and, and just be at peace with it. If the opportunity didn't come up, like don't force it, you know, look, look for that right opportunity to share the reasons you have hope um, and be a real person and a Mm -hmm. real friend to someone. And we'll actually talk about that at the deep dive is some of the things to look for in a conversation where maybe you can seize an opening that maybe you wouldn't have thought about as an opening. But we'll we'll talk about that a little bit at the deep dive as well. What's crazy is how much in just your day to day, the more your faith becomes, um, you know, prevalent in your life and the more you're leaning on those things, uh, it just like people ask, well, why did you do that way? way?" And all of a sudden you're like, oh, it actually is a spiritual, there is some spiritual opening here that say, actually, it sounds crazy, but I just, you know, God says this, so I do it, you know, and and you'd be shocked at how many times those just mundane conversations um, are actually like very impactful, very impactful opportunities to just um, sneak in some of the gospel uh, there. And, you know, sometimes that just sparks another question. And then all of a sudden you're in a deep conversation. It's almost... (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's almost, almost <laughs> as if God is in control of everything. Oh right? yeah, sure. Almost as if that. Well, I always like to keep it personal too. Like, this is what I believe. This is this is how I experienced it. Because it's hard to really get mad at someone for something that they personally believe, or yeah. you know, what their experience has been. Mm-hmm. Versus, you need to do this, or you know, you're missing out on that. Like, of putting it on, putting it onto yourself. One of the reasons I think we get so. We, we like hype it up. We're like, oh, this is such a big, important conversation and I have to have it with this person. And we get all in our heads about it and then we miss all these like natural opportunities for it because we're like, I have to have it. And what happens is I think sometimes our brain starts thinking about it as confrontation, mm-hmm. not so much as just conversation. And, mm-hmm. and I think that that's, uh, that's where we get, we, we're like, oh, this is going to be an awkward conversation. There's no way to fit a confrontation. Yeah. There's no natural confrontation. <laughs> it's yeah. all and uncomfortable. It, yeah. If I can press just a little bit on okay, that, yeah. though. Let's so I agree. It. Confrontation is not where you want to go. Conversation is great. Yeah. But in between there, there's also invitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And conversation forever is not yeah. useful yeah. unless yeah. it leads to invitation. Doesn't yeah. have to lead to confrontation. Yeah. Yeah. But if it, it's C- got to Can lead. you expand that a little bit more? Yeah. I mean, I, I can talk till I'm blue in the face with someone about my experiences and yada yada yada. Yeah. At some point, I need to say, "Hey, man, I would I would love for you to accept Jesus." Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a conversation with someone not too long ago where we we were having a very in, intense spiritual conversation, and it just got to the point where I said, 
are, are you ready? Yeah. Like, uh, do you yeah. want? Do you want to accept Jesus? And they weren't. <laughs> they weren't ready. <laughs> they weren't. Yeah. But later they were. All right. And so, and, and that's that's cool. Yeah. But at, at some point, you got to be willing to. Yeah. And, and that is a that's a tough thing to do right. sometimes. But at some point, you got to go there and say, I, I would like to invite you to accept Jesus as your savior. Yeah. Uh, that's important. Good point. I would like to invite you. If you are watching yeah. today. <laughs> all right. And, okay. So uh, that's all we got as far that's as it. deep dive. Uh, so j- could you just give us uh, the date and time again? July 17th. It's a Wednesday night, 6 p.m. at the gathering. Child care provided, but sign up ahead of time on the Church Center app. All right. Well, till we meet again, thanks for joining us. Bye.